eukaryotic system contains more than 1 billion proteins. A system can have more than 10,000 different types of proteins. Which means about 60% of the dry weight of an organism is nothing but proteins. And these functionally related proteins are all compartmentalized. Which means that these proteins must move. So cell is a very dynamic system. It is not static. Including a plant cell, there is a lot of activities going on in every cell. So in order to carry out a function, a protein must move, vesicles must move, organelles must move. Now, how is this directed motion happening? And every motion has a particular purpose to perform. So in order to carry out this directed motion, we have very good setup or system existing in the body. Today we are going to look at these molecular motors. Please understand that all these molecular motors requires energy input. And energy is available in three forms. So which are the three forms which energy is available? In the first form is the energy which is present as a reducing equivalence as NADH or NADPH. Another form by which energy is present as ATP molecules, as nucleotides, which is a ready available form of the energy. In the third form by which energy is available as iron gradient. So, especially in the production of ATP production, the, the iron gradient is created against the inner mitochondrial membrane that gradient can be used for driving reactions. So these are the three forms by, by which energy is available in the system and that energy is utilized for mobility and carrying out functions. If you look at uh, uh, the, the motor systems which are functional in our body, there are two important elements to that in every uh, molecular motor systems. Which are the two elements? The first element is there is a motor. And the second element is these motors are, they are not randomly working. It is all directed. It is all with a particular function. So therefore, there is a very good network of a cytoskeleton There is a very good network of cytoskeleton which is uh, con which consists of three things. One is uh, uh, intermediary filaments. Intermediary filaments. There is an actin molecule, actin filaments, and also there is microtubules. So these are the three cytoskeleton filaments that will help in directed motion in a cell. Based on this, so therefore, these are nothing but, these are forming a kind of a tracks. So you have a motor and you have a track in order to deliver the cargo. If you look at these motor systems, there are four different types of motor system existing. So which are the four different types of motor systems? The first one is known as translational motors translational motors are they are moving in one direction one dimension and uh, so therefore they are able to deliver the cargo classic examples of translational motors are uh, actin myosin uh, microtubules and dynein kinesin all these are examples of translational motors Helicases which are moving um, on uh, DNA in unwinding, another example of a translational mot motor. If the second kind of uh, motor is what we call it uh, a rotary motor. See, the rotary motors are by rotation, it is able to create a torque, and that torque is used in order to uh, uh, 
in order to drive or in order to deliver or transport things. For example, cilia, a classic example. F0, F1 complex, examples of rotary motors. If the third type of rot a motor is uh, called the uh, polymerization, polymerizing motor. Polymerizing motors, that is in certain organisms, actin can be polymerized and that polymerization drives the molecule forward. That is another kind of uh, a motor. And in the last type which we will discuss is uh, translocational motors. See the translocational motors, you are able to translocate a protein from one place into another place. From the extracellular side to the intracellular side of a mitochondria. Or a virus is able to inject the nucleic acid from one place into another place. These are all examples of translocational motors. We will look elaborately at each of these motors. Let us focus our attention on translational motors. So translational motors are those kind of motors which will, which will move in one dimension and it will have a track on which these motors will move. They are the translational motors. A classic example which we are going to take up just now is the uh, myosin. Myosin an excellent example of a translational motor. Let us look at the structure of a myosin. Myosin is a very large protein. So if you look at the structure, um, it, is, it, is, it has got two heavy chains and the molecular weight of the two heavy chains are about 230 kilo Dalton and it has got a globular head so there are two globular heads followed by a very long uh, fibrous alpha helical structure. Okay, alpha helical structure. The diameter of this is about 2 nanometer is the diameter of this helical structure. The length is about 150 nanometer. That is the length. Now, this globular structure has got ATPase activity. So that is the most important thing. Globular head has got ATPase. Apart from this globular head, uh, two heavy chains, it has two pairs of light chains. So here is one pair of light chain, that is two light chain, if the molecular weight is 20. And these light chains are called the essential light chain. It also has another pair of light chain, again another two light chains, molecular weight is 20 kilo Dalton, that is called the regulatory light chain. So therefore, what is the total molecular weight? 460, this is 40, this is 40 and that makes it 540 kilo Dalton is the overall molecular weight of this particular protein. So you can understand that this is a large protein. Now, uh, a lot of work on myosin has been done by the Huxley brothers as well as uh, St. George. They are the people who worked on myosin molecule in the initial years. They were trying to find out what is the basic structure of this myosin. So what was done is, so this myosin is treated with the trypsin. So trypsin is a protease enzyme. What happens when it is treated with the trypsin is cut the myosin into, uh, into two parts. So you have one part with the globular head. Okay, one part with the globular head and the remaining fibrous portion. This fibrous portion about 85 nanometer. That is the length of the fibrous portion. And it also has the light chains are there and then they were checking which portion has got the ATP hydrolyzing activity. So they used to add ATP and then they will see how the viscosity changes of the whole medium. So it was found that this 
portion it is fibrous it is alpha helical and it has no atpase activity whereas this portion it has globular it is soluble and it has got atpase activity and this has a molecular weight of somewhere around 340 kilo dalton if the experiments were not oh, okay by the way so this portion is called uh, heavy marrow myosin and this is called light marrow myosin now the experiment is not over it was treated with an enzyme known as papain which is extracted from papaya papain cleaves here so what do you get you will get in the two globular heads with the light chains okay and this fibrous portion and this globular head is called the heavy marrow myosin subunit number one and this is heavy marrow myosin subunit number two so this is how it was named what was found this portion HMMS2 has no ATPS activity whereas this portion had ATPS activity. Myosin has the ATPS activity that is what was proved with the help of these experiments. So this is the basic structure of the motor protein. What is important for us to understand as we move ahead is this motor protein which becomes part of the muscle and this is the, is the hinge region which when the ATPs are hydrolyzed it has the capacity to pull in the bind to a uh, actin molecule and pull the actin molecule pull the actin molecule towards itself this is the point that we have to see as a motor protein by pulling it will pull once it will move ahead pull again and this is how this will act as a motor protein.